San Diego County and its beautiful mountainous landscape is the home of the Southern California Tribal Chairman's Association. A multi-service non-profit corporation comprised of 19 federally recognized Indian tribes. Their primary mission is to serve the welfare, education, cultural and economic needs of its tribal members and their descendants. Native Driven Network caught up with Dennis Turner, the executive director of the SCTCA, to visit some of their programs and discover how they play a key role in the growth of these tribal communities of Southern California. My name is Dennis Turner. I'm the executive director of the Southern California Tribal Chairmen's Association. I want to welcome you all to Southern California, tell you a little bit about our reservations. We have 19 reservations that go from the Santa Barbara coast down to Mexico, across San Diego County from the ocean, Pacific Ocean, all the way to the Colorado River. And what I want to do is take on a little journey to show you what we do do with the Southern California Tribal Chairman's Association. We have several programs that we want to introduce you and actually see what we actually do on the ground with our frontline people. From here, we're probably going to go to the Tribal Digital Village. From there, probably to one of our daycare centers then on to some of our other food distribution programs and other programs that we work with. So we're going to head on our journey and let's see what you learn. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today. We want to come over and just make a quick visit of the village. Okay. Maybe a five minute trip. Do you want to see the studio? Because I can run over and unlock it now. Yeah, that would be good. We're going to enter over here the uh, tribal digital village in which we have several services that are uh, carried out of this location for all of the tribes in the, the whole area. But we, we have about seven complex areas and offices within the Santa Barbara, San Diego area. We're going to go left up here where the sign is that says uh, Tam's office. Yeah, it's called uh, Neto. Neto. Just go ahead and pull straight ahead. We've arrived at the Tribal Digital Village and I'd like to introduce to you Matt Rantani, the IT director here and also manages the village here. Matt? Welcome. So we're standing in the center of the buildings that create the, the digital village or the village if you will. And we have behind us the Tribal Digital Village's uh, data center where we run the um, Tribal Digital Village network. We have our transportation services, our IT department, our resource center program, our tribal TANF program, uh, recording studio, and our tribal print source, which is a uh, business to business marketing solutions printing company. A little bit about the building behind me. We started in uh, 2001 with a digital village grant to create an opportunity to bring broadband to all of the um, reservations that are in part of SETCA's member tribes. And we created a high speed wireless network, as you see on the antennas above the building there. We have um, antennas shooting broadband mountaintop to mountaintop using solar power to support currently 14 of the 17 reservations in San Diego County and, and several reservations in Riverside County. The benefits are widespread. So from everything from applying to grants, continuing education opportunities, job search, job training. Uh, we started nativehire.org and nativehire.org is a job uh, placement service for, um, for tribal folks as well as companies looking to support their diversity with, with tribal hires. You know, just, just really job search in this economy uh, that, you know, people can't afford to travel to do a lot of this work. They got to figure it out from home and then be able to move and, and find a job that's, that's close to the reservation to, you know, to survive this, uh, this situation. And, and it's been a big difference for people. The Tribal Digital Village addresses the lack of internet access for the 8,900 people within its 17 tribal reservations enabling them to remain connected in a technology-driven world. 
After visiting the tribal digital village in Pala, NDN traveled through San Diego County to the Los Coyotes Reservation to find out how the commodities program was helping Native families. The Food Distribution Program on Indian Reservations, also known as Commodities Program, was created in 1977 as an alternative to the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or Food Stamps, to provide healthy foods to low-income Native American families living in remote areas. At the time, Congress was concerned that it might be difficult for Native Americans to participate in the food stamp program since many reservations were located in remote areas distant from food stamp offices or authorized food stores. The Commodities Program is administered at the federal level by the Food and Nutrition Service of the USDA and locally by Indian tribal organizations like the SCTCA. The program is currently assisting over 75,000 individuals in approximately 276 tribes across the nation. In San Diego County, the SCTCA administers the program to 700 people within 14 Native communities, also providing nutritional education, easy recipes, and exercise training tips to maintain a healthy population. Uh, different uh, participants come up here and they sign in. They bring us out a paper with, um, depending on their household size, and then from that paper we pull their cho choices, you know, food they want, and we pretty much pull the order and you know send it out here and uh, they put it in the truck for you know, or we help them. I think right now we're averaging uh, almost 700 a month, and that fluctuates too. Tribes around here have like work crews. So a lot, a lot of the times during the summer, a lot of the guys are working and stuff like that. But when work goes down, you know, of course our participation goes up. You know, uh, with this food that the uh, travel chairman, you know, uh, gives to, to the natives, you know, helps us get by, you know. I really appreciate that, you know, we, we all do. The commodities will last me all month long. Up until we get them again, the food, well, yeah, it goes all month long. You know, and the food stamps, would, they were gone in no time. After leaving Los Coyotes, NDN continued the journey to learn more about the other programs that the Southern California Tribal Chairman's Association offers to Native families. Can you let Yvette know we're around the office there today? Then you can tell Susie we're going to go daycare about 1, 1.30. Okay. We arrived at the Rincon Child Development Center where low-income families are provided with the opportunity to give their children quality education in a positively reinforced learning environment. Right now, we're in Rincon Valley Center, California. Hello. Hello. Hi, Kim. Hi, Dennis. How are you? Good, good, good for you. We service about 17 families, and we are a state-funded preschool program, and they qualify by family size and income. And once that is determined, there's a scale that we have to follow through the state. The Rincon Community Child Development Center is dedicated to quality and affordable child care services for all those residing in this native community. The majority of our families are low income, so a lot of them don't have a fee, a child care fee. I like it because it's really, really small and we get to know the families. The program has been in existence, I want to say, probably over 35 years. And it actually started um, just down the road a little bit in a small single wide trailer. And I believe we are the longest running program in this area. Thank goodness to Southern California Tribal Chairman. Teachers use um, two different types of curriculum. They use a creative curriculum, and then they also use a plan of possibilities. It's pretty much child-directed, where children learn through collaborating with other children, and then maybe telling a story about what they've made, or if the teacher asks them questions, open-ended questions about what they have created. So this is the main classroom that's been here for many, many years. Um, they, we use this one classroom, it's, it's a little bit bigger, um, but um, each child has their own cubby and they have an art cubby. Who would know this <laughs> little thinner would bring somebody from here to Harvard to getting an uh, MD degree in Harvard, come back come into back. our community and be the main doctor.
here, we're fortunate to be close to our families and be close to our community because we are so small and our community and our parents and everybody has helped this program survive. So we are very fortunate.